Hi everybody, welcome back to Rich Reviews. And today is the final, final, final update on the nine issues that we have with our Lotus Amira before it goes in to have all those nine issues repaired. <laughs> It's a big cathartic day today. We're literally driving up to take the car in for it to have all those issues repaired and it's going to be with the dealership for a week. And of course, we'll give you a full update on how those remediations go, how that progresses and if there's any issues downstream. And we'll walk you through the repair work that's been performed. First of all, before I provide an update on these issues, I just want to say thank you very much to all our loyal viewers and especially our Lotus owners who've been commenting on these series of videos and giving me updates on how their cars are performing and the issues that they're having with their cars and providing me feedback on the items that I'm detailing, I'm discussing with regards to my car. Very, very useful for the channel. Thank you very much, guys. Very important. So the first item on the list is good old climate control. And we've got the climate control problem now because we need to use the climate control. Um, unfortunately, we can't use it on a lower setting because it only works like a switch, on or off. So if I use it at the moment to try and clear the screen because the, the screen is fogging up, the, the screens on the Lotus and Mirrors tend to fog up quite easily. As you can see, it's on full blast. You can't have it part way. You can't have it between minimum and maximum. It's either off or it's on full. Now, I'm not going to go into any great detail on the rest of the items uh, because I'll just point you to the previous issues videos that I've created. I'll fast track through now these items because I'm sure you've heard it all before and I'm sure you don't want to listen to it all in great detail again. So the next item on the list is the climate control buttons. The climate control buttons inside, the temperature button and the fan control buttons, they're very stiff, especially the temperature control button. And Lotus are going to try and ease those buttons up a bit. I don't know quite how they're going to do that. It could be because the buttons are too pushed on too hard or it could be that the grub screw that holds them on is uh, tightened up too much with it close to, too close to the fascia panel I'm not sure but anyway they are going to look into that problem so that's the second issue on the on our list now the third issue on our list is the SOS emergency system the SOS emergency system reports an error if the car cannot see the GSM network because they have a SIM card within the system or if the 5 volt backup battery is low on charge, is a bit depleted on its battery charge. Now if you, have, if you keep your car in the garage as I do, then of course the car's probably not going to see the GSM network. So of course you're going to get that error when you start the car, which I get every single time I start the car. Also, if you, also if the 5 volt battery also, if the 5 volt battery is a bit depleted, then you're going to get the error as well. Um, now, unfortunately, that 5 volt battery isn't charged when the, when the car is on a battery conditioner or on a battery tender. It's charged only when you're driving the car. So you have to drive the car and then stop the car and then start it again if you want that error to go away. And that error tells you to go to the dealer to resolve the issue with the SOS system. And the fix for that is a firmware update that in effect changes the message. And again, more details um, with more details from the previous video I created um, with the links in the description below. The fourth item on our list is the electronic parking brake. The electronic parking brake causes problems when it sometimes doesn't release properly and the car stalls. This is resolved by slight updates and configuration changes to the parking brake system, but to be able to facilitate those changes, they have to blow the new firmware on the car that provides access to the electronic parking brake configuration interface. And the fifth item on our list is the front parking assist sensor. And the front parking assist sensor comes on and beeps at us and tells us that something's in front of the car when actually there isn't when we're stopped and the resolution to this is either the number plate is impacting the visibility of the parking sensor on the front or it's actually a failed parking sensor i actually think it's a failed parking sensor because I, it looks to me that the number plate isn't impinging visibility of the front parking sensors but the dealership are going to look into that the sixth item on our list is paint bubbling in effect osmosis on the engine cover and this is due to reaction between the composite materials used to create the, the body panels on the car and the paint and that is going to be resolved by a whole new engine cover being fitted which is very impressive and that engine cover will come pre-painted these engine panels are created by a company called Tajin um, so Lotus outsourced to Tajin for them to create these panels again more details about that company and why Tajin is used 
in my previous videos, link in the description below. Now we're going to stop at a picturesque area and we're going to talk you through the remaining items on the list. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. We've now pulled over at one of our regular locations and I'm just going to go through the three remaining items that I haven't talked about in the car because I need to really gesticulate to those. So number one is the windscreen. The windscreen is split down from down here and actually running across horizontally across the car now. So it's really desperately needs to be replaced. The windscreen is made up of two panes of glass and it's the inner section of glass that is split. If you want more details on this, I'll put a link in the description below to our previous issues um, video where I talk through in detail about these problems, but I'm not going to go into any great detail about these because you can just check out that other video. So the windscreen, that's going to be replaced. The glass is around £2,000, just the glass alone. So I reckon I estimate with around um, fit, fitting the glass, the cost of fitting, etc., is going to probably come to around two and a half, three thousand pounds for that. So that's quite a pricey job to have done. Secondly, is the adjustment on the driver's side door. Now, the driver's side door is there's a little bit of wind noise, and I and the, and the wind noise seems to come from around this area. And it's really around motorway speeds. And the reason you notice it is because the rest of the car is so quiet. So it's a big positive for Lotus. They've actually made the car very quiet. So it's really noticeable that you get wind noise from this area. And I've spoken to obviously the Lotus dealership about this and it's because the door isn't quite adjusted correctly. The way how they resolve that, again, I don't want to go into any great detail, check the other video for more details, is they put the door on an alignment system, which is a laser, laser, uh, which has laser range finders on it. And, they, and once they've got the door on that alignment system, then it's quite easy to actually align it. But it's a pain in the ass getting the door on the alignment system, apparently. So that's the door. And the last of those three items is the good old... <laughs> let me just open up the engine cover is the good old supercharger wastegate relay wastegate actuator relay so this is the wastegate actuator relay this is supercharger and um, which i think is really well designed looks really cool like that um, and it's the adjuster thread rod and the adjuster thread rod is fitted there and it should come up to about this height um, we've got a picture we'll just try and put a picture in here so you can actually see what it looked like when we test drove the car when it went for its first service, which wasn't at Safwat Car, Safwat Car sent the car for its first service. They managed to shear that rod off. Um, and that is a, an adjuster thread. So in effect, it sets up the start point of the actuator for the wastegate. So it's quite an important adjustment. And what's happened was, as we detailed in our previous video, Lotus stated that they'd have to replace the whole supercharger because they can't provide that single thread and get that remediation work done, which is absolutely ridiculous. And that was going to cost £10,000 or over £10,000, including fitting, which is just ludicrous. But they've now come to their senses. Again, thanks very much to Rybrook Bristol and to Matt at Rybrook Bristol in particular, because he's been very tenacious and he managed to turn it round and they've seen sense and they're providing just those parts now to remediate that area. So no longer the situation where it's going to be a new supercharger, thankfully. And they are going to repair it by putting a new thread on there. And those parts are now available. So all this work, all these nine items are going to be performed next week. And again, it's no point in me giving you the date because it bears no resemblance because uh, no resemblance for you because it all depends on when you're watching this video. So this car will be going into Rybrook Bristol to have all these nine issues resolved. And then when it comes back, I will report back to you to let you know how those issues have been resolved and how the car is performing after those remediations. Hopefully everything will be fine. And I've got a good feeling about Rybrook Lotus in Bristol. I think they're really on it. They really know their stuff and I'm really fortunate to have found them. So I report back when we know more about how the problems have been resolved and how they've been resolved. I'm also hoping and I haven't asked yet, but I'm also hoping to actually get some footage while the work is being performed. Uh, that, you know, that may be 
very tricky to get done, but I'm going to ask anyway to see if we can provide you some footage while the car is actually in the workshop having some of the work performed, which would be really cool, I think, and be very helpful to you guys and really show how good Rybrook Lotus are at resolving their issues as well and how important it is for you to find a good local um, Lotus dealership to help you through any problems that you have with your Lotus and mirrors.